Hello and welcome. If you're one of the many, many, many people who reached out to me through our social media platforms after our review of the Mini EV, asking how do I get my hands on one of those things, I've got good news for you because Wuling's line of tiny electric cars is finally going to be sold outside of China. Starting with this, the Wuling Air EV. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. This is going to be a static experience of the Air EV because this dealership display model doesn't really have a license plate quite yet, but be sure to hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can know when our full video, including test drive, debuts later this year. While Wuling has sold other models outside of China, this is the first of their electric city cars that will be making the leap to foreign shores. That move starts in Indonesia, the only country outside of China where the company has a strong presence and a factory. No word on where it will go next, but it's a safe bet that other Southeast Asian markets are high on the list. As a global model for Wuling, this car uses their new global design language. Gone is the little bulldog face of the Mini EV, and in its place is a much more daring and futuristic design, embodied by this combination daytime running light and chrome trim that runs from side mirror to side mirror. Speaking of lights, the headlights on the lower spec models are halogen, however higher spec models like this use these LEDs. The Air EV rides on the same global small electric vehicle platform as the Wuling Nano EV and the Mini EV. Now the Nano EV is a two-seater and the Mini EV is only available as a four-seater. This car comes as a two-seater and a four-seater. Think of this as a upgraded version of both the Nano EV and the Mini EV. Our car is a four-seater, which you can tell very easily because it has this window behind the B pillar. Like the Mini EV, this car uses 12 inch wheels. However, while the Mini EV only comes with disc brakes on the front and uses drums in the rear, almost every trim level on this car has discs front and rear. The Air EV is slightly longer in overall length than the Wuling Mini EV's base and mid specs. However, it's actually slightly shorter overall than the high spec Game Boy that we drove last year. It does, however, have the exact same 2.01 meter wheelbase as the Game Boy. With those numbers in mind, it's not particularly surprising that rear cargo space isn't very big unless you fold down the split rear seats. The Air EV is positioned above the Mini EV in the Wuling lineup, with prices starting around $10,000 for the two-seater variant and $11,000 for the four-seater. The Mini EV, meanwhile, starts at $4,500 here in China. Before we jump inside of the Air EV to check out the interior, let's go check out the interior of the Wuling Mini EV to get a sort of baseline of what we can expect. Okay. All right, things in here are pretty sparse. You've got a seven inch digital instrument cluster, a HVAC controls, and a stereo head unit that looks straight out of the 1980s, except for that USB port, of course. Apart from that and some body color trim pieces like this, material quality is like that of a public bus, I would say. That includes the hard, thin seats, which make my butt and lower back hurt after maybe two minutes of sitting in them. Okay, okay, now let's check out the Air EV. Well, my first thing I'm noticing is there's a lot of similarities, starting with these door cards, which look to be pretty much identical as far as I can tell. It's also the overall layout with this HVAC controls here and the transmission knob down between the seats. The differences though are obviously quite a bit more distinct. Uh, for example, the door cards have much better material quality. This is soft touch here. The seats as well are clad in a faux leather and they seem to be better padded, much more comfortable than the Mini EV. Let's see what else. Oh, they moved the vents from the upper dash to the lower dash and uh, they got rid of the radio head unit because they have two 10.25 inch LED displays. So these are only available on the 
higher trim levels of the two-seater and four-seater, but those cars still only cost 11,000 and 12,000 US dollars respectively. The UI on that screen is pretty basic, but it includes everything you would expect these days, like navigation. You can control that navigation using voice commands, along with the air conditioning, the media, and even the windows. Hello, Xiaoling. Hello, 第一个目的地上海浦东国际机场准备出发全程六十一公里大约需要五十八分钟前方右转 But that's not all. You also get a 360 degree camera, auto hold, and park. Believe it or not, the Mini EV only has reverse, neutral, and drive, and then a handbrake, like a manual car. This one, though, has its own park and an electronic handbrake. But that's not the best part. The best part can be found up here. While the Mini EV only has a vanity mirror for the driver, the Air EV, it has one for driver and passenger. Welcome to the good life. With a wheelbase that's the exact same as the Wuling Mini EV Game Boy, not expecting extra space in the second row, and sure enough, I'm not going to get it. Let's see here. A little over a fist worth of space back here for the seat adjusted for me. I'm five foot nine or about 1.72 meters tall. So decent amount of leg room, head room, also not so bad. However, the seating position, oh boy, uh, my legs are very, very high. And these seat backs, which are not adjustable, are about as straight as a flagpole. The Air EV already felt like a major improvement over the Mini EV, and that was before I started looking at the spec sheet. While the two-seater version uses the same rear-mounted motor as the Mini EV Game Boy, making 30 kilowatts and 110 newton meters of torque, the electric motor of the four-seater makes 50 kilowatts and 140 newton meters. Okay, okay, so neither of them is exactly a powerhouse, but an extra 20 kilowatts is gonna make a big difference. What'll make an even bigger difference for users is the fact that the four-seater comes with fast charging. That means that the charge times for the 28.4 kilowatt hour battery pack in the four-seater drops from eight hours to as little as 45 minutes. That battery delivers 300 kilometers of CLTC range. Now, two-seaters use a 26.7 kilowatt hour battery pack that doesn't have fast charging. So while it delivers the same 300 kilometers of range, it takes 7.5 hours to charge. That's gonna do it for our first look at the Wuling Air EV, but be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see when our full video debuts, including test drive. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing what 50 kilowatts of raw power feels like on the road. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check us out on our social media and our website, links in the description below.